Well, good morning on this Remembrance Sunday and a really warm welcome to you from St Stephen's in Prenton. A sadly empty St Stephen's. We would have been delighted and privileged to have you join us, but obviously we're not able to do that and not able to gather at the War Memorial. If you don't know me, my name's Matt and I'm the vicar here. And if you wouldn't normally be with us in church on a Sunday morning, well, you are particularly welcome and we're delighted that you've been able to find us and join us like this. Later in our remembrance service, we will be marking together the sacrifice of those who gave their lives for our freedom. And um, kindly, some people have filmed laying some wreaths down at the War Memorial earlier in the week. And with these, uh, these crowns of poppies, we will be thankful for uh, those who laid down their lives. But it is, of course, a different crown, the crown virus, the coronavirus. I'm sure you've heard people explain that um, corona, the Latin for wreath or crown, is where it gets its name. And it is uh, that which today prevents us from being able to join together in an act of remembrance, which I know for many of us uh, brings deep sadness, uh, which we are only too painfully uh, painfully, uh, aware of with the restrictions that we're living with. But as the crown virus keeps us apart, as the crown of poppies will enable us today to remember with thanksgiving, it is uh, to another crown that I want us to focus our attention. At the end of our service this morning, we're going to have the hymn, the well-known hymn, crown him with many crowns. And in that hymn, we hear this line, from pole to pole, let warfare cease. And amongst many other prayers, I'm sure, particularly today, uh, this will be one of our prayers, won't it? That wars would cease from pole to pole to the ends of the earth. So let me ask this question. What does end wars? The First World War, the Great War, was meant to be the war that ends all wars, wasn't it? But can anything really triumph over tyranny? Can more terror end all terror? Can brute force subdue itself? Can darkness drive out darkest dread? And can death extinguish death? Well, those are poetic words that we will come to later in our service. This morning in our prayers, our readings and our hymns, they will point us both to what causes war and to what ceases war. To the one who wore the crown of thorns, And now today, where's the victor's crown? Well, we'll come to more of that as we go on. Before we sing our first hymn together, let us begin with some words of introduction, famous words from Psalm 46, and then I'll lead us in an opening prayer. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. The Lord Almighty is with us, The God of Jacob is our fortress. And some words of Jesus in John 15. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And so as we gather, we do so in the presence of God and in the name of Jesus. And so it's in his name that we turn to pray. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, our God, giver of life and source of all comfort. As we gather, separated by distance, but united in our remembering today, we do so with thanksgiving for our freedom, but also sorrow for all those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away for our peace. Be with us, we ask. Comfort all who continue to bear the painful consequences of war, And help us hear today your words of hope, your precious promise to make all warfare cease to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today, as you sit in front of a widescreen monitor of some kind, rather than standing before the war memorial, we can't help but be aware, can we, that so much has changed this year. But our opening hymn reminds us that God doesn't change. Praise him still the same forever. So join in if you're able or just listen to our first hymn. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. And after our hymn, we will have our Bible reading from Psalm 46. God 
is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease in to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Well, Rob, thank you very much for reading Psalm 46 for us. I'm just going to briefly read a couple of other uh, short passages, this time from the New Testament part of the Bible. And firstly, I'm going to read a couple of verses that Jesus' own brother wrote in a letter that he wrote. So this is James. He says this, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and you do not have, and so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain. And so you fight and quarrel. Or some words of Jesus in John's Gospel this time. Jesus says this, My kingdom is not of this world. 
if it were my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. But now my kingdom is from another place. Well, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we come now to spend a bit of time thinking about what those passages mean, especially on a day like today and and in times like we are living in, I want us to think about what comfort there is in a world where there is war. We're thinking about that, especially today. We'll think a little bit about what causes war and, and what is it that can make wars cease. We heard that promise in Psalm 46. So as we come to think about those things, let me lead us in a prayer, and I'm going to pray that God would help us to understand, but I'm going to begin by praying the special prayer for today, Remembrance Sunday. So let's pray. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's continue in prayer. Father God, as we come now to look at your word in the Bible, please open our eyes to understand. Please help me to explain it clearly. And please help all of us to trust Jesus the King, who alone can make warfare cease from pole to pole. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me ask you that first question. What is it that gives you comfort? I imagine for each of us, there'll be uh, different things that would be our go-to for comfort. Uh, Maybe you would opt for um, the calories and uh, and some chocolate uh, to find a little bit of uh, comfort after a bad day or a bad week or whatever it's been. Uh, Maybe it'd be a blanket um, or a cuddly soft uh, toy. Maybe that's your go-to comfort. I guess for others it'll be different things, Uh, maybe uh, a good film um, or a box set cuddling up on the sofa on a Friday night uh, with the TV on uh, or curled up with uh, with a good book. Um, For uh, others of us it might be uh, some retail therapy, Um, you'll have to use it online, sadly we can't uh, go to many of the shops, can we? What is it uh, that you go to to give you comfort? Well, today, uh, it may be any number of things that we need comforting from, but today, particularly at the forefront of our minds, is war and conflict. What comfort can there be in the face of war? World War I, you'll know this, it's ranked as uh, amongst the most deadly of conflicts in human history. Estimated that 40 million lives were lost, military lives and civilian lives. I've been to Uganda in Africa a couple of times and um, Kampala, the capital, is uh, hugely crowded and busy, people everywhere. But 40 million is the entire population of Uganda. That's a lot of people. World War I, the Great War. H.G. Wells called it the war to end all wars, but, but not even the cost of 40 million lives could manage that. Somebody else has estimated that there have been just 26 days of peace since the end of World War II, and some would even say that there have been fewer than that. But most of the time, except perhaps briefly on days like today, we ignore, don't we, what is so blatantly, blatantly wrong with our world. We mostly ignore death, that is, until something like the COVID pandemic rudely interrupts and forces us each day in black and white on our TV screens to have a daily death toll fed uh, into our news stream. What comfort is there in war? What comfort is there in a world, in a world like this, like ours, that can be so achingly beautiful as it is at moments, and yet we know, if we're honest, is so agonisingly broken? And yet the writer of this song here in Psalm 46 says there is comfort to be had. The whole song is is the offer of comfort from God. It's right there at the very start, isn't it? God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Famous words, famous offer of comfort. 
It's there in the middle of the song, verse 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And like a good chorus, it comes again at the end, verse 11. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God offers comfort. But God here in Psalm 46 offers us comfort in the midst of turmoil and trouble. Do you notice that in verse 2? There's all sorts going on, things that could make us fear, things that will make us quake. But God offers us refuge and help and comfort in the midst of that turmoil and trouble for any who take refuge in him. But it begs the question, doesn't it? And maybe you're asking this question already. If God supposedly is so powerful, so strong, that he can be a safe place, a refuge, a fortress, he's called twice here, from all that shifts and surges, from every calamity, from every conflict, from cancer or coronavirus, well, then why is the world like it is if God is so powerful? In verse 9, the songwriter is going to claim to us that this God can make wars cease. And we long for that, don't we, particularly on a day like today. But the very fact that God offers comfort in the midst of trouble and in the midst of a broken world, it makes us face up to the reality and ask the question, why is the world the way it is? What causes war, we might ask? If you've got a, a child at school, or perhaps you can remember this yourself from your own school days, there will be a point, uh, or perhaps you can remember it a long time ago, uh, where uh, the homework question is set, or perhaps it comes in an exam. Explain the causes in the build-up to World War II. We've certainly had that kind of discussion uh, over homework around our table at home. Well, I'm not exactly sure who said this, but uh, we know the old adage, don't we, that history is written by the winners. But in all the ink that has ever been spilled, from whichever side of any conflict it's been written, whether it's telling of triumph's tale or tragic loss, whether it's capturing gallant generals and heroic hearts and brave battalions, or whether it's recounting a Kaiser's pride and a nation's fear and the terrible terrible depths and human capacity to inflict cruelty on a fellow human being. Well, Psalm 46 points the finger to those on, on both sides, to those on every side, to those from every nation and in every age. What causes war? Well, at root, it is our overwhelming, our constant inclination to wear a crown and to rule our own lives, to grasp and to fight for independence, if you like, not just from tyranny, but to claim a crown that rightfully belongs and only belongs to God, our maker. And so God himself, the God who rightly should wear the crown, speaks to us from this psalm and he tells us to stop it. That's what verse 10 is about, be still, and know that I am God. Be still or, or stop it is a good translation. I read these verses just a few minutes ago from James, Jesus' brother. Do you remember what he said? What causes quarrels, he asks, and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, and so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, and so you fight and quarrel. You see, the evidence, the evidence is plain if we're honest with ourselves. The evidence is plain that we try in vain to take God's place and to wear a crown on our own heads. I've got a, a children's crown here. It's like we put a crown on our heads and it's as silly as I probably look now. And it's seen in every fight and every quarrel we get into as we exalt ourselves and we put ourselves first, serving ourselves before others. And so as uncomfortable and as unwelcome as it might be, God says, stop it. Know that I am God, he says. I will be exalted. And one day, whether we welcome it or not, whether we want it to come or not, 
We will each, all of us, have to take off our little silly, foolish crowns. So Psalm 46, well, it's an invitation to do that. If you want comfort from this God of strength and refuge, take off your crown, be still, and know that he is God. Psalm 46 is an offer of comfort, an offer of refuge for those who will do that, who will come to him sooner rather than later and while there is time. Well, so far we've touched on war, haven't we? We've touched on the coronavirus as well and and we've touched on some of those things that remind us that there is so much wrong with our world. As beautiful as it can be at moments, there is something terribly wrong. And we've touched on the causes of war and we've seen our ugly part, our fight for independence, our independence against the God who rightfully is king. But I said that there's one other crown as well. And this time it's not a a crown like the silly crown that we wear which captures what is so wrong with the world or like the, the coronavirus which is just a symptom of all the many things that are wrong with our world as we lay the poppy crown at the war memorial, reminding us of so many needless deaths. Now there's one more crown, which instead of reminding us what is wrong with the world, reminds us instead what God has done to put his world right again. I quoted uh, earlier on in the service from a poem. It's part of a little film that's been put together, which we're gonna watch after the act uh, of remembrance. And it reminds us that when God stepped into his broken world in the man Jesus, he didn't come in military might with battalions and and battlements, but in meekness, his power was made weak. A walking, talking armistice, the poem calls him. At the beginning of of World War II, our Royal Navy, the British uh, Royal Navy, uh, was the strongest fleet in the world. But King Jesus, when he came into the world, he didn't come with an invincible fleet. He stood quietly and turned the other cheek. So what is it that makes wars cease? It's what we long for, isn't it, on a day like today? The video that we're going to watch talks about the war to end all wars, but it asks this question. Can anything triumph over tyranny? Can more terror end all terror? Can brute force subdue itself? Can darkness drive out darkest dread? Or death extinguish death instead? How can God promise what he promises here? That he will make warfare cease from the ends of the earth. How can he promise that without requiring us to pay the price for our part in what is wrong with the world? To pay the price for my part and my heart and your heart set in insolent uproar and rebellion against God in his rightful rule. Well, I read this verse right at the beginning of our service, a famous verse often read on Remembrance Sunday. Words of Jesus, he says this. Greater love has no one than this, that he, Jesus, lay down his life for his friends. Well, the sacrifice of so many which we rightly remember today reminds us, doesn't it, of another sacrifice of infinitely costly value and worth. Jesus, who laid down his life to pay the penalty for our hostility towards God so that one day the peace that he offers between God and man now will one day cause all warfare to cease. You see, when Jesus stood and turned the other cheek, he took the blow, he absorbed disgrace, he laid down his life, and he brought forgiveness. He won peace, the poem will say. It might sound too good to be true. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. I've got one more final verse for us from the very end of the Bible, from Revelation 21. It pictures our world but this time it pictures our world made new. And this is the fulfillment of what God is promising in Psalm 46. It's the promise of what the world would be like for all those who take refuge in this God, the promise of a place in the city of God. So listen to these words from the end of the Bible, Revelation 21. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. 
They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. You see, it's not too good to be true. He really does make wars cease from pole to pole. And so as we finish and we prepare to make our act of remembrance, can I ask you, what crown will it be for you today? Which crown will take centre stage? There's the crown virus, the coronavirus, which stops us being together. Is that foremost in your mind? It reminds us, doesn't it, about... um, Uh, So much of what is wrong with our world, the poppy, the crown of poppies, reminds us of war and death, the cost of war, reminds us those things that there is something terribly wrong with our world. And we know that we are part of that, if we are honest. There's the little crown, the silly, foolish crown that, that you and I wear. Will you keep tight hold of that? Your crown of independence, of rebellion against God, Or will you lay that crown down? Lay your crown down before him who laid down his life to bring peace on earth and peace with God. Who laid down his life, his his power made weak, who turned the other cheek so that one day, one day all warfare will cease from pole to pole. Well, let's just pause briefly. And then I'm gonna say a short prayer before we go into our act of remembrance. So let me lead us in a prayer. God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. O God, our only refuge and help, We admit our part in what is wrong with the world. Help us trust the one whose power was made weak. Help us trust Jesus who stood and turned the other cheek, who took our place, who bore our punishment and laid down his life that we might know peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we go now to our act of remembrance. As we come to this act of remembrance, we recognise again the great cost and sacrifice made for our freedom in the world wars. And we remember Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the extent of God's love by his own costly sacrifice. We continue to pray for reconciliation between the nations, that people may live together in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who through bereavement, disability, pain, or displacement, who continue to suffer the consequences of any conflict. And we remember with thanksgiving and sorrow all those whose lives were given or taken away in war and conflicts past and present. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them.
So let us pray. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you all those men and women who have died in active service, fighting for freedom, defending peace and upholding justice 
in the two great wars and in many struggles and conflicts since. As we honour their courage today, help us to value our freedom. As we cherish their memory and sacrifice, help us to honour your son and his costly sacrifice. Grant us grace to put our faith in you and in your future, for you are the source of all life and all hope, now and forever. Amen. prayer for those affected by conflict. So let us pray. God of justice and peace, we pray for those who have been injured or disabled through war, for those who have lost homes and security through conflict, for those who've lost relatives in wars, for any who face danger and take risks for peace, for all those, especially children caught up in current conflicts, for refugees and for all those in need of aid and other help. Amen. If I should die, think only this. A bullet flew by that did not miss. What story of the war is told? Romance bright or horror cold? Triumph's tale or tragic loss? The iron or the wooden cross? Lost lament or victor's boast? Full brass band or lone last post? Heroes, villains, cowards, kings, it's war. It's all these things. It's us, unleashed for good and ill, the gallant heart, the savage will, a Kaiser's pride, a nation's fear, a global greed, it's all in here. What causes war, the old book asks. Beyond the history, beneath the masks, begins a want, becomes a will, demands its way, prepares to kill. The wars we mark as long ago are close to home. They're all we know. What ceases war? The pressing question. What can halt inborn aggression? To end all wars and retribution, war itself is no solution. Can terror end all terror now? Brute force subdue itself and bow? Can darkness drive out darkened dread? Or death extinguish death instead? We need to interrupt the spiral. Find the antiretroviral. The story is told of Anti-Zeus, a god of peace, made human truce into our world, into our midst, a walking, talking armistice. A king now meek, his power made weak, to stand and turn the other cheek, to take the blow, absorb disgrace, then rise to give again his face in grace undimmed and arms unfurled, to bless and pacify the world. And you, to sweet surrender brought, forgiveness for your battles fought, peace to pass to every soul, then warfare ceased from pole to pole. Well, that video is moving, isn't it? Poignant and um, probably quite uncomfortable. 
as it reminds us painfully perhaps that what causes war what well, it comes from in here doesn't it the greed the pride the selfishness that we know if we're honest we know is not all that well hidden inside of all of us one of the things that we usually do after the act of remembrance at the war memorial is is join together in a corporate act of confession and then an act of commitment to work for peace so let's take time first of all to confess to god the sins and the shortcomings of the world its pride its selfishness and its greed its evil divisions and its hatreds and let's also be honest and confess our part in what is wrong our failure to seek justice and peace and our failure to love god as we should and and to love others as we should so some words are going to appear here on the screen so let's join together in confessing we say together most merciful god father of our lord jesus christ we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed we have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Well, some words again from Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And so almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so having confessed our sins, let us take the opportunity to pledge ourselves, commit ourselves afresh to truth and to justice to God and to putting him first and putting others before ourselves and to commit ourselves to peace and the help and the relief of any who are in need so the response to three simple questions is we will if you would be happy to join in so firstly will you strive for all that makes for peace we will will you seek the good of others we will and will you work for the relief of any in need we will well we're going to take the opportunity to affirm our faith if you feel able to join in and uh, and answer these questions will the responses i believe and trust in him so let's affirm our faith together do you believe and trust in god the father source of all being and life the one for whom we exist. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. And do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, we're going to continue with some prayers now, and Dave Bennett is going to lead us in those. Let's pray. God of strength, who is always present, Help us to find help and safety in you in these troubled times. Although the world is in turmoil, help us to look to you, Lord, and not be afraid. Lord, help us to be still and acknowledge that you are God and that you are in control of all things. We thank you that you are with us and we can depend on you. Please comfort and strengthen all those who have been hurt or harmed by war and conflict. Come close to those who on this day of remembrance are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for all who would have stood today by the Prenton War Memorial. Be with us as we pay our respects to the fallen in other ways. Please look in mercy on the people of the parish of Prenton. 
May our reflecting on conflict cause us to seek after the peace that only you can give. Dear God, the greatest conflict in human history is the way we have turned our backs on you and want to rule our own lives. May we each see that this has caused division between us and you, the living God. Help each one of us to put our trust in Christ, who died for our sins, so that we could get right with God again. We pray for those who will find lockdown particularly difficult, those who are isolated and feeling lonely, those who are under financial or, or emotional stress. We pray for all who are feeling unwell or coping with ongoing health issues. We pray particularly for Isaac Ward, Grace Blackmore, Finlay James, Peter and Barbara Sharp, William Smith, John Crabb, John Penny, Winifred Hughes, Marge Crallin, Gaynor Kennedy, Maureen and Steve Vitti, Pauline Bent, Jill Allen, Pat Ainsley, Thomas Walker, James McCulloch, Dylan Stewart and Richard Martin. Whatever our situation, please help us to trust in you. Let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thanks to Dave for leading our prayers and to everybody who's made this service possible, to those who've decorated St. Stephen's for us for this Remembrance Sunday, and uh, to those who came at short notice to be filmed, those behind cameras and computers, and our musicians as well. Many thanks. And we would normally invite all of you back here to join us for refreshments at St. Stephen's, but we can't do that, which is a real sadness to us. But I would like to extend a few other invitations to you. Whilst there won't be services here in person, there will be a service online each Sunday available from 10.30 here on YouTube and um, you're very warmly invited to join us for those. It may be that these times that we're living in or something I've said in this service has made you uh, ask big questions. Where is God in this coronavirus world? Uh, I'd like to just mention a couple of things. We have a, a quiz night on Friday the 20th of November. There's a little advert here for it. It's free. It should be lots of fun. But there'll be an interview as well, part of that quiz night uh, with someone, just finding out a bit more about why they keep following Jesus in the face of coronavirus. Uh, we also run a course called Christianity Explored. That's free as well. And you can watch a short trailer after this service and you can find details on our church website or just get in touch. But if you're more of a reader than, uh, than a talker, well, finally, I'd like to plug this little book. And uh, if you'd like a copy, just get in touch with uh, the church office. It's called Where is God in a Coronavirus World, written by uh, John Lennox, a professor in mathematics. And um, not exhaustively, but um, uh, give some really helpful answers to that timely and um, uh, important question. Well, I'm going to finish by leading us in a prayer and a final blessing before we sing our final hymn, that hymn I mentioned right at the start, crown him with many crowns. So let's pause for a moment and then let me lead us in a final prayer. Our Father God, we've thought together about the cause of war. We pray that you'd give us grace, help us to cast our crowns before you, Help us to acknowledge and trust the true King, the one who wore the crown of thorns, the King of love and the King of peace, the Lord Jesus himself. Strengthen our hearts and our hands and our minds, we pray, to work together for peace and to seek your kingdom above all things, that your will might be done and your kingdom come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining us this morning. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways from pole to pole. Let war, that wars may cease and all be prayer and praise.